John Fetterman is at it again, arguing that anyone demanding a ceasefire in Gaza should be more concerned with the Israeli hostages. Let's watch. And that is protesting or demanding for a ceasefire. Let's be honest here. Why aren't you protesting to bring them all home right now? Why aren't you demanding that Hamas surrenders as well as well too? Bring all of these people back home now and this and stop pretending that this is some kind of equivalence here now. This is like, bring them back. Now, some online were critical of Fetterman's comments. Commentator Katie Halper posted on X, if John Fetterman cared about hostages, he'd be calling for a ceasefire. Friend of the show, Sabrina Salvati, wrote, white man who chased down a black jogger and pointed a gun in his chest doesn't understand why people are protesting against ethnic cleansing and genocide. For I always forget about that Fetterman story. Fetterman is bought by the Israel lobby. He doesn't actually stand for anything but money. Now, I think the real issue here, the elephant in the room, is that, of course, um, Israel just rejected uh, the Hamas uh, ceasefire plan, which would have brought it into the conflict and a return of all of the hostages. As we read in more detail into the plan, I think it was yesterday, that it was a series of weeks-long pauses that our fir the first round would be exchanging all of the women and children and elderly men and sick people. The second round would be younger men. And, and the last round would be an exchange of remains, and in exchange, of course, for Palestinian hostages that are being kept in Israel. And the Biden and Netanyahu both seem to reject it. The characterization, this is not from me, but of Axios, is that uh, Netanyahu is rejecting any kind of resolution that will bring an end to the war. He wants, and I don't want to mischaracterize him, but as we discussed yesterday, seems to want to continue this ground invasion. Now, the latest out of Gaza is that, as we now know, as we know, Palestinians have been told to go increasingly to the south, to these safe zones. The safe zones are frequently bombed, but they're told again and again that they need to retreat to these safer and safer zones. Now, there's a concentration of Palestinians in southern Gaza, near the Rafah Gate. And as we're speaking, Israel is planning a ground invasion there. So that, combined with all of these statements from senior Israeli officials about the desire to resettle Gaza and settle it the way it was settled before uh, 17 years ago, and actually physically occupy Gaza instead of just occupying it from the perimeter, suggests that there really isn't any kind of deal that they will accept because their their idea of what resolves this conflict is so far apart from what Palestinians believe well, will they, resolve this conflict. They have said what will take, what will necessitate bringing an end to the conflict is the surrender of top Hamas leadership and them going into exile. That is the deal that Israel offered that Hamas rejected. So. Hamas, so Hamas has rejected Israel's plan, and Israel has rejected Hamas's plan, and so the yeah, violence I mean, will continue. You know, I mean, and the question is, who is really prioritizing hostages here? That's what uh, Fetterman is bringing up. And so he's saying, don't call for a ceasefire, because what we should care about is hostages. Well, if your number one priority is hostages, there is a deal on the table that will return all of the hostages. And well, in fact, what you're seeing is a real disrespect and disregard for hostages. We reported this week that, what was it, 30, um, Hamas reported that 30 hostages had been killed by Israeli airstrikes. The Wall Street Journal opinion section printed an article two days ago titled, Overvaluing Hostages is Israel's Weakness, making an argument in that piece that Israel should not be prioritizing its hostages and that it should be doing basically what Netanyahu is doing, yeah. which is prioritizing this goal of eliminating Hamas, which, as we discussed on this show, any number of military experts across the ideological spectrum says is just not possible. No, I don't know that they say it's not possible. They've said it's very difficult, and maybe it's not possible to the extent that the humanitarian disaster without that ensues. Dropping it, a nuclear without, bomb on Gaza or, or something. I mean, or without having ground troops there for in, indefinitely, but they seem increasingly willing to just do that. Well, that, they so don't say that. that. They don't say having ground troops in Gaza indefinitely well, will until not. until Hamas is defeated. Right. They say that that's not possible, that having you can have ground troops there forever. Hamas isn't going away because it's an occupied territory where people are resisting the occupation and more and more people are just going to join right. that resistance effort. And as long as they continue resisting, as long as they will be. I why should. Right. right. 30,000 so, are dying. There are vastly more casualties, obviously, almost almost entirely all the casualties in this war at, at this point since October 7th, virtually all of them on the. Palestinian side. I think well, some exactly IDF true. members have. Well, yeah. okay, can I'm I sorry, finish talking? Some IDF members obviously killed during this conflict as well, but 
you know, it, it's going almost entirely the other way. So they're they're the losing side in terms of a in terms of the, the military confrontation. I mean, they're they're, they're not meet, they're only meeting arms resistance from militant groups. You know, hiding with it. It's not like open. Often, frequently, open exchange between standing armies. Right. So they're the losing. Not allowed to have a They're the army. losing side. So they should, in fact, surrender. So then, <laughs> any like continued resistance on their part is totally futile. Right. So I, I really I get, the I get your position, I mean, Robbie, but I really want to talk about what Fetterman is arguing here. What Fetterman is arguing, what arguing is that you should be prioritizing hostage release. He, and he's saying that people who are advocating for a ceasefire are disrespectful of hostages and are not prioritizing hostage release. And the point that Katie Halper is making is that, in fact, there are multiple deals on the table that if you sincerely thought this was about hostages and that they should be prioritized, that you would take. One, because the stated goal here, instead of hostages, is defeating Hamas permanently, which is not going to happen, and two, because you're basically speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Moreover, there is demonstrated evidence that Israel does not, in fact, prioritize hostages. One bit of that evidence is how many of their hostages they have killed, both with aerial strikes and by shooting and directly killing three Israelis that were waving an, a, a, a white flag of surrender as they were trying to return to their own side of things. And so at a certain point, I think it has become apparent to the public that the idea that um, people fighting for peace or, or supporting Palestinians or wanting a ceasefire are being indifferent to the lives of hostages is really falling flat, as you're seeing increasingly the open wanton disregard that Israel is showing for its own hostages. And by the way, Netanyahu was getting an enormous amount of pushback within Israel from hostage families exactly for this reason. They believe that Netanyahu is not prioritizing the release of hostages. So for John Fetterman to say that it's somehow the ceasefire protesters that are being disrespectful to the lives and interests of hostages, when again, Israel shot dead in cold blood three of its own hostages. Yeah, they, That's the what's people who did incredible. that. Incredible. Right. But you're, and you have alleged that that was deliberate, I think. I don't. You think they, I don't accept that it was they deliberate. Act, they accidentally shot three people in cold blood I mean, who were waving a white flag? makes it sound like it's no one's fault. I think the people who did that should be held accountable. I think Israel said it was going to investigate So it was the intentional. Well, if no, it, if it was, it's not accidental, what do you think well, it was, they were— no, it, was, it was they thought they— They thought they were murdering Palestinians in cold blood? They thought they were shooting at militants. They, they thought, were wrong. No. And they're, they did not think they were shooting at militants. Militants don't hold white flags up and say, I'm surrendering. So the options are they thought they were shooting at innocent Palestinians or they thought they were shooting at Israel, innocent Israelis. Those are the options. Whatever. Honestly, All right. Whatever. So, the, I mean, it's an interesting question. What do you guys make of the fact that the Wall Street Journal is now writing in its opinion section that basically Israel shouldn't value hostages? That it's a weakness that Israel overvaluing hostages is Israel's weakness. But again, we're not going to outsource the look. If someone is holding your loved ones hostage, an enemy military, an, an, an enemy terrorist organization, it's that's terrible. We're not going to put you in charge of what the military response is. I All mean, right. that's so if, obvious. So if Israel agrees that uh, uh, hostages shouldn't be the priority, why is John Fetterman arguing that somehow pro-Palestinian protesters are the immoral party here for disrespecting and disregarding the rights and interests of, of, of hostages? I think they're the, in fact, they're the immoral path, party for underplaying the responsibility of the terrorist no, group their path, in this entire thing. No, their path, the path thing. that the ceasefire Many advocates— of them endorsing the actions the of the The ceasefire advocates would have these hostages released months ago under one of these ceasefire agreements. But okay, Israel I'm a ceasefire advocate because I think Hamas should surrender and then Israel should stop fighting them and they should exchange hostages and prisoners. Do I count as a ceasefire Fire advocate no. for having that position? No. And remember, Hamas's response, uh, sorry, Biden's so response to this. So you're a ceasefire advocate if you think Israel should stop fighting and the Palestinian side should continue to do whatever they want. No, I think that both sides should stop fighting. That's okay. a ceasefire. But they're, all, they're only going to stop fighting, like Hamas isn't going okay, to stop fighting. Okay, but Robbie, <laughs> if I said uh, Israel, the ceasefire agreement is that Israel has to stop fighting and I has to banish all of the members of right, the right-wing fascistic parliament that was just having a settler's dance party two weekends ago and banish them from Israel. You understand that that's a non-starter. I mean, I would I hope those dictate, people get voted out of yeah, office. voted out sure. is not banished. Well, they can't vote them out in Palestine because it's not, they're not elected anymore. They don't hold free elections. Yeah, it's true. They're not allowed to be a country. They're not allowed to have a standing well, army. Hamas they're not allowed doesn't to have let airport. them vote on who's going to be in charge. No, Israel doesn't let them have a, it. Like, literally, the whole point of this is that is No, the whole point is they pulled out that you govern yourselves and then no. the people put Hamas in charge and then they gave them no power to ever change right. that. So the, the problem here is that since 19, for 75 years, 
Gaza has existed as an occupied territory that does not have the right to self-defense, the right to self-actualization, the right to autonomy that any other state in the world does. The reason it does not have that, despite the fact that all but four countries in the United Nations voted for it to have its uh, nationhood, is because the United States has given diplomatic cover along with Israel and yeah, two other micro-nations. The reason they can't have it is because they have a terrorist organization in charge of their territory that needs to be That's defeated so for their own Rodney. good. You know that Hamas rules in Palestine because that is what Bibi Netanyahu wanted. You know that to be true. We've sat here. We've talked about it. Yeah, we've read articles about it. We've, loses we've too. interviewed guests about him sending suitcases full of money to Hamas. And yet you still— But at no point do I defend Netanyahu. Minute, you still bring up over and over again that somehow it's some 17-year-old who wasn't even alive when that election happens fault. I didn't say it was his that, fault. They're the victims of Hamas. That's why we want to defeat and exile Hamas. And you make it sound like that's some horrible goal. Hamas is the garbage man. Hamas is and the And they nurse. gotta go. They gotta go, Brianna. Okay. They gotta go. Okay, right. So... That's, that's the I, I totally hear your position, yeah. but I'm just going to say for the record okay. what we're talking about here, because the conversation, and this is, a, this is a sticking point, Robbie, like we have to talk about what the segment is about. This segment is about whether John Fetterman's argument. Talk that, about whatever you want. That John Fetterman's argument that ceasefire advocates are trying to disrespect, disregard, and ignore the interests of hostages, when in fact the stated position of the Israeli leadership and Benjamin Netanyahu is to not prioritize hostages, getting flack from hostage family, and instead prioritizing this unreachable goal of ridding Gaza of Hamas and starting a ground invasion today that is attacking a densely packed civilian population that even before this war started was one of the most dense populations in the world. A ground invasion after already 27,000 people have been killed, including uh, 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 like half of the Israeli hostages that have been killed by Israel, including three that we saw get shot in cold blood by the IDF. And so the question is, who in this equation is actually disrespecting the lives, interests, and well-being of hostages? We'll have more rising right after this.